What is going on guys? In this video, we're taking a look at a pretty interesting paper that I uh, read the other day, uh, which is 360 Brew, a decoder only foundation model for personalized ranking and recommendation uh, by the 360 Brew team uh, at LinkedIn. So yeah, like basically when you think about recommender systems uh, and you think about companies like LinkedIn, Netflix, Meta, etc. Like the systems that they have, and they mention here, these systems have evolved into complex multi-layered architectures that leverage vast data sets and often incorporate thousands of predictive models. So basically imagine that like for each specific subtask of the recommender system, they have their own model. And so when they get new data, they have to fine tune that one. And they just have a lot of small specialized models. Basically, you know, they mentioned here, this approach not only exasperates technical debt, but also hampers innovation in extending this system to emerging problem domains. So what we've seen lately is a lot of people starting to use Gen AI LMs as sort of having powerful reasoning, uh, general world knowledge, and that basically the kind of LM is sort of a data centric approach where it's a one large model and you just feed it all of the data that you have. Um, and so people are really curious about this, you know, can we make this work into recommender systems and how well does it work? Uh, what is the best sort of path to do it? Uh, because there's some different ways you can uh, use LLMs, etc. cetera. Uh, all right, so we introduced um, 360 Brew, uh, which was built by a small team of researchers and engineers over a nine month period. 360 Brew is a 150 billion parameter decoder only model that has been trained and fine tuned on LinkedIn's primarily first party data and tasks. This model is capable of solving over 30 predictive tasks across various segments of the LinkedIn platform, achieving performance levels comparable to or exceeding those of current production system based on offline metrics. So what's important to note here is that they are using, it's only a ranker model which is usually the diff more difficult uh, out of the two. And they argue that they can use the same candidate generator for all of the tasks essentially. But so it's an LLM um, and it works in tech space, which we'll see, but this is just sort of the, the summary, right? So for their introduction, they go through some general stuff about recommender systems, how, you know, here it's typically like a two layered approach, right? Where you have a retrieval, the candidate generator, which is optimizing for recall. And then you have a ranking, which is more optimizing for the precision. And usually the ranking is the more challenging task, uh, you know, where you need more parameters and so on. So imagine, you know, the retrieval takes it into several thousands of items where potentially the corpus can be millions. And then the ranking maybe says, you know, a 50 or something like this in the final recommendation. But that's basically what they mentioned here. Um, all right, so recent advancement in decoder-only model architectures that use language as an input interface have demonstrated their cap capabilities in understanding reasoning and solving a variety of tasks. So, you know, basically they say like, all right, the LM hype is real. <laughs> Let's see if we can make this work because it's performing amazingly well on other tasks. So presumably it can work pretty well for recommendations as well. And, you know, there's a lot of benefits to doing this, you know, uh, not only the one model, but also that you solve a lot of issues related to, let's say, cold start and a lot of feature engineering issues that they usually have for these small specialized models. And basically how they frame this then uh, to look at a concrete example is many shot in context learning. I think this is like most easily viewed through their example here. So they give an instruction to the LM. Uh, you are provided a member's profile and a set of jobs, their description and interactions that the member had with the jobs. For each past job, the member has taken one of the following actions, apply, view, dismissed, or did not interact. Um, and then basically they say, you know, they give context of the member profile, past job inter interaction data, and then they form a question and they form the question in a binary uh, way, which, which essentially, you know, Will the member apply to this job or will they not apply? Um, and so there are some interesting, you know, challenges with this. Um, first, you know, I think most obviously is that we're only in text domain, right? So all the tokens, et cetera, are all text, um, which means like most likely it's going to be more inefficient uh, because you don't have item IDs for the specific 
actual um, jobs, etc. The other thing, though, that's a very you know benefit to this is that it will generalize a lot better, right? Because we we don't have to fine tune specifically on specific item IDs, and for data sparsity problems, etc., this will work. Um, I think it's you know one other thing is that obviously as we make this very long, the computational resources increases a lot, and that you know if we introduce a lot of past job interaction data for users who have had you know thousands and thousands of interaction data if we have an item id for that user we can instill a lot of that information uh into the actual embedding right but here we would have to increase the context and so we would just have to add more and more uh rows or sort of text right to this and one issue there is obviously we're going to reach some type of context limit and Typically, these LLMs are not trained on a lot of really long contexts. So that's like one thing to keep in mind. But, um, you know, for majority of use cases, I think this is a really interesting and very sort of the most simple way you would have had imagined to do this. Um, it's just to, you know, view it as a text, uh, text domain only and just recommend ask the LLM directly, you know, will the member apply or not? So uh, basically here they say, since the 360 brew model relies solely on interaction industry, it eliminates the need for handcrafted time horizon specific features, such as interactions per week, uh, which are customary in traditional RS. Basically what they're saying here is that we uh, don't need to do a lot of uh, feature engineering. And then the 360 brew model is built on top of Mixtral 8 by 22 uh, billion uh, pre-trained mixture of expert architecture so i think um you know this is one thing that's interesting this was this paper re was released you know in, in just a few months ago in february 2025 uh, but they worked on it for almost a year so the lm space is changing rapidly perhaps they would have chosen another model at this point um perhaps deep seek but obviously deep seek would have you know about 670 billion so it's a another sort of dimension of parameters this one, what's good is that basically it's uh, Apache license and it's commercially available. So this is a good sort of starting point is Mixture 8x22. Um, but yeah, it's sort of an interesting thing to think about, like what type of models there exists and pros and cons to each. Uh, let's see. So basically they mentioned here that for simplicity and ease of scaling, the majority of traditional large industry ranking models are framed as binary tasks such as probability of like. Therefore, we also adapt our prompt so that the model generates binary predictions. And then basically you can imagine that um, you only get yes or no, right? Uh, but you might want to have some type of score. So then they say, you know, we use the logits for these tokens to obtain scores and compute metrics such as area on the curve, etc. So that's actually quite interesting. They can just check, right? For the prediction of the next token, they can check what is the probability of yes versus probability of no. Um, and so then you can use that for, for you know, getting actual confidence scores, which are needed. All right. And basically here they show like um, um, how it scales over um, when we increase token data. So basically, this is comparison in to production, and this is the billions of tokens. So we can see that basically it continues to increase, which might be uh, indicative that you know more data is going to make it even perform better. And so yeah, um, this is uh, basically it scales really well to more data, which we know LLMs do generally. Uh, here is one e example comparison which they've done to you know, um, 7 billion model, um, then Mixtral has an 8 by 7 billion, and then 8 by 22 billion. And generally, and obviously, the larger one performs better. But depending on the task, it's not an insane difference. So like for some tasks, you might be able to use distillation um, and still make it perform really well. Whereas for other tasks, uh, like this task three, um, and they're very secretive, by the way, in this paper. They don't share any details at all about anything, really. Um, so, you know, it's quite difficult to actually gauge uh, some things in this paper. But, um, you know, generally still, it's interesting, right? So let's go down a little bit. Here's another interesting thing where they basically show, all right, so 
they started at 8,000 tokens. Um, and then we'll see, all right, how does it perform when we increase, um, you know, the context length? Um, and so once we increase to about, I don't know, for some it differs, but let's say for like 30,000 tokens, it generally performs quite well. Uh, obviously for this like task one, it's already started to go down after just 25,000. And then obviously at the edge here, it's going to fall off quite a lot because it just doesn't have that much training data, presumably of having this many tokens. Um, and just the LLM originally was not trained for this as well. So this is an interesting challenge. I think we mentioned this previously uh, before as well, where if we increase the context length, uh, we need to be careful because it's not trained um, on that. And obviously inference uh, costs a lot more as well once we increase beyond certain limit. All right, so here's basically, I think the most important graph from this paper, uh, which is basically very secretive, but Basically, if we look at four tasks, which presumably are one of the most important tasks at LinkedIn, um, then we can see that the 360 brew actually beats three out of four in production, uh, and it performs very similarly on task two. So this is very promising, meaning that we can actually replace uh, potentially a lot of these uh, specialized models that take a lot of engineering effort to make work into a single large model uh, that performs even better across these tasks. Here's another sort of interesting graph where we have relative performance gap between 360 brew and production model as a function of max number of member interactions. So um, four members with a low interaction count. So if they only have five, then it actually performs a lot better, um, you know, the gain compared to production. And this is kind of what we talked about, right? Like when you use embeddings in some way, you can kind of get those, uh, all of these over a hundred activities and you can be able to compress them down into the embedding space um, because it will learn through backpropagation, right? But here, since we have to add them in context, um, they're basically just, uh, it, it won't be able to generalize that well in just a single prompt. So an interesting thing that I've seen from other papers as well is, you know, the LM can, we can actually not only use token IDs from the actual text, we can actually add a few in the vocabulary. So perhaps there are some users, not that many, uh, hopefully, you know, that have over a hundred uh, activities. And so we can add token IDs for those um, specific ones. Um, and that could potentially help sort of um, be able to use some of that information. But, you know, to get the details on this is a, is a bit uh, tricky and Comp makes the flow more complicated as well. Uh, and then another thing that they try to say here as well is that compared to production where, you know, if we look at um, baselines as the test data gets temporarily farther from the training data, basically the performance drop in percentage, um, you know, compared to the 360 brew is about, you know, one fourth of the production. And so it generalizes um, better when it's not, um, when it, when it gets farther from the training data, which is another, I guess, pro of this kind of approach. And yeah, that's it for actually this paper. It's very short, uh, it doesn't give many details. Um, I would say it's not very nuanced. Uh, there's probably a lot of things to this that we're missing. But with that said, I think it's probably fair to say that, you know, we're seeing a shift in the recommender system space uh, lately where we're just getting an insane amount of LLM applications. And then the question is like, all right, what is the actual solution that we're gonna, like what's gonna be the the go-to solution because people are trying out multiple different things right now, I would say. Um, all right, that's it for this uh, paper review. I hope you thought it was interesting and I hope to see you in the next one.